welcome to Sheboygan County Government Working For You. In fact, welcome to our 100th program of Sheboygan County Government Working For You. Pleased to have you with us today and also pleased to have Mike Tobenheim, our administrator of Rocky Knoll. It's been a year since he's taken the reins over there and Chairman Mike Vandersteen and I are looking forward to discussing with him what's all happened the last year. Mike, why don't you start by sharing a little bit about yourself and, and how it's been going the last year. Sure. Um, first of all, thanks for inviting me, and it's a real pleasure to find out that it's the 100th show, so I get to hit the centennial. Um, I've been in the healthcare industry uh, some 35 years now. Uh, when I started out, I uh, joked routinely that I would never live to be 30, much less, you know, be in the business 35 years. Um, so it's, uh, it's been an interesting experience so far. Uh, and you're back to your roots here in Sheboygan. I am. I'm originally from uh, Sheboygan. I uh, was born and raised, went to uh, Urban and North High, and uh, then uh, off on, on a wild uh, uh, tour f of the United States. So. Well, it's good to have you back and good to have you on your program. In fact, 100th program, we thought we really had to bring on one of our most successful department heads, and it was a tough discussion Mike and I went through because we've got a number of good folks, but you made the cut, Mike. <coughs> well, thank you. I'm honored. <laughs> I'm honored. I'll collect the plaque later. Later. <laughs> okay. Off the air. Okay. Mike. T tell us a little bit about um, some of the greatest challenges you had coming to Rocky Knoll right out of the gate. I know, uh, I know you had to take on some big challenges. Yeah, um, I did. Um, uh, it's been an exciting year, but uh, there have been some significant challenges. Probably one of the biggest was uh, uh, I came on board right on the heels of uh, the transition um, as uh, uh, Sunny Ridge uh, was privatized and uh, a lot of the uh, staff from Sunny Ridge, uh, uh, as with County Comp prior, uh, were now at Rocky Knoll. So basically, I, I would say that was probably one of the largest challenges that I had, was to create a, a new team out of these uh, three separate workforces. And I remember a lot of staff introducing themselves, hi, I'm Jim, I'm from Sunny Ridge, or hi, I'm Bill, I'm from County Comp, mm -hmm. kind of thing and uh, trying to remind everybody they're from Rocky Knoll. So it's, it's, uh, it's taken quite a bit to uh, get the staff to acclimate and join as one and focus on their new home or home now uh, as uh, Rocky Knoll. So that was probably one of the biggest. The other was uh, a concern as to uh, what would happen to Rocky Knoll. Um, you know, would it be privatized? Would it be closed? You know, sold? What would happen to it? And um, so, as we worked uh, with the staff, getting to know the staff, that was probably the second big issue that I've noticed and, and had to work with. And then, of course, just getting your hands around the operation itself. You know, what we were doing, how we were doing it, what was working, what wasn't working, and figuring out where to go. So, a year ago, August, you walk into this. This building with staff from essentially three facilities, Rocky Knoll, Sunny Ridge, Comprehensive, all have come together. We just went through the, the difficult bumping process associated with privatizing Sunny Ridge. Mm -hmm. What were your impressions? What were your first impressions of the, the facility and, and of the staff? Um, the, the, the facility, first of all, was um, uh, a gorgeous facility. I mean, it's a, a very big campus. Uh, and that's probably the best way to, to phrase it, uh, comprised of three distinct buildings. Uh, original uh, building uh, uh, of the current configuration was built in 1972, uh, another in 1992, and then the latest addition, our Woodlands uh, unit, short-term rehab uh, in 2002. Um, so it was a good building um, uh, out in the country. Uh, so from a um, location, location, location kind of thing. You had the location in terms of uh, the beautiful uh, scenery, the, the secluded uh, environment, but you were away from most of the activity. Um, uh, we're probably one of the furthest facilities away from any of the area hospitals, which are your main feeder sources and that. Um, so it, uh, while it, it had its pluses, there were some minuses that you would have to deal with and overcome. The staff, um, 
I was just impressed, just blown away by the um, seniority, by the experience level um, of the staff there. Um, and while there was a lot of challenges trying to get them to grow to be a single family, um, you certainly had the wealth of uh, experience and, and, uh, uh, and skill uh, to work from. Probably uh, so, uh, uh, by far the most uh, seniority and experience that I've ever had in one building uh, in my 35 year career. And when you're talking about quality of care, of course, a more senior experienced staff, that's, that's gonna bode well for the residents they care for. It will. How about your management team? Of course, you've been working very closely with them. What was your impression there? Um, equally as uh, impressed. Uh, uh, very devoted individuals with, uh, again, a lot of seniority. Um, some of these uh, department heads have uh, been in the county system for over 25, 30 years, and uh, uh, very impressive uh, skill levels. Um, of course, you know, I, I threw a new wrinkle into the way we were going to do business and, and the way we were going to grow and, and build our uh, organization. But uh, they brought the, all the basic uh, sound foundation uh, tools that you would need uh, to move forward. Very dedicated and very interested in um, um, being successful and making Rocky Knoll successful. Well, as you know, the county board struggled for years with the, the size and scope of health care centers that we had and, and from a standpoint of the property tax levy continuing to go up to subsidize owning and operating at 1.3 facilities and then two. And you came right on the heels of mm -hmm. privatizing Sunny Ridge. And Dale Paul is your predecessor. You know, he did a nice job with that transition. He yep. was a good person. Uh, employees were comfortable going to him. But uh, when he retired and we had the opportunity to, to hire a new individual, of course, we were looking for someone who could take on the incredible challenge that you took on. And with your background and ability, uh, we certainly were blessed with the right person. What have you done in the last year to help reduce the pressure on the property taxes associated with subsidizing Rocky Knoll? Well, uh, as I started to look at the operation, um, it became clear to me uh, very early on that um, um, this county-owned facility suffered from a lot of the same concerns or problems that um, most county homes that I've uh, uh, dealt with over the years uh, was facing, and that is, um, while they were good at trying to control their costs and rein it in, um, their cost base started out much higher than the normal privately owned and operated facility from the private sector because of uh, the benefits that you know, county uh, uh, employment offers. Uh, and uh, with that, you know, even controlling costs, uh, you're never gonna be able to compete face to face with the private sector. So what we needed to do was look at the revenue side. And as, uh, as was my experience in the past, um, while we had a, a decent sized population in the facility, the facility was doing very little to optimize its revenue streams. And that became my main focus. Um, I knew, uh, again, early on that by cutting costs, I was not going to be able to achieve the goals that the county has set out for me, which was to you know, maintain that facility uh, in county ownership and keep it a viable entity without uh, continuing to drain the resources of the county to try to do that. And uh, so we had to focus on building revenue and that, that has been our primary focus going forward. The next question we have is, how would you rate your success the past year? And, and let me quickly answer that for you. Okay. Outstanding. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> please, thank tell, you. please tell our viewers why. Well, um, I'm hoping that it's uh, because of some of the achievements that uh, our staff and, and management team have made out there. Um, so far this year, we are running $1.2 million uh, ahead of the revenue streams generated the same time last year. Um, we've converted that into bottom line dollars, or in this case, savings to the county of just over $300,000 so far this year. Um, as compared to last year, 
um, we're operating almost uh, uh, three quarters of a million dollars ahead of last year. So uh, we're doing pretty good in, in moving forward. And, and, you know, my only warning is we're just starting. We're just getting going. Kind of warning we like to hear. Uh, last question before I turn it over to Mike Vandersteen. Uh, as you think about or reflect on what you've been able to accomplish in the last year, which we all know how quickly a year goes by, mm. what are you envisioning or what do you anticipate doing in the year ahead? Um, continuing a lot of the same successes we've already started, hopefully, um, the management team continues to gel and, uh, and, and get better and better at, at what they've done and what they're doing. I've uh, introduced some financial management type programs to help uh, them understand uh, the cash flow, the way the money moves throughout the organization, and give them a real-time ability to manage and steer those, those funds the appropriate way. Um, we're continuing to educate the staff um, to make them more uh, involved in this entire process. I've been teaching uh, reimbursement to nurse aides since the uh, mid 80s and I don't want to change that trend. I want to continue to go that way because I fully believe that the more my staff uh, understands um, how this business works and moves forward, um, the better job they will do um, to help us get there. Um, because they're interested not only in providing uh, quality care, but interested in sustaining the facility. Very good. Thanks, Mike. Mike, about in the state of Wisconsin, about half of the counties don't operate nursing homes. What are some of the advantages and disadvantages you see for Sheboygan County because we do have a nursing home? Um, the advantages uh, or disadvantages sometimes become much more evident than the advantages, but the advantages, quite honestly, are much more profound. Um, the disadvantages are you have a large workforce um, and uh, with uh, the county's costs and benefits and programs, you know, it's a costly operation um, to keep going if uh, it's not uh, aggressively run um, like a business. Um, the advantages, though, clearly outweigh the disadvantages. The advantages, it gives the county internal resources to deal with the public health issues uh, and resident, uh, uh, county resident health issues that it, in a lot of cases, is mandated by law or regulation to deal with. Uh, provides a, uh, uh, a resource to the county to utilize at a much lower cost than paying outside private resources um, to provide or other counties to provide. Um, uh, uh, behavioral health is, is an easy one that, uh, uh, that comes to mind that uh, is beginning to be more and more a topic of, of discussion um, as the needs become more evident um, to the county and to the community. Um, there's got to be a place, you know, that uh, you can work with these individuals and help them and give them the proper care. And uh, that is just one of the voids that we can help fill. Okay. Um, coming from the private sector as you have, uh, what are your early impressions of uh, working for county government comparison? <laughs> It was, uh, it, it was an interesting transition, and uh, uh, you know, my initial impressions, I'm not sure what my initial impressions were going to be. Um, I envisioned myself um, you know, uh, raising a question and a year later still working to try to achieve an answer. And quite honestly, I'm, I, I have to say that I've been very pleasantly surprised. Uh, we've kind of mapped out a strategy um, with uh, our liaison committee, and I've had the pleasure of, of, of strong support from both Adam, um, Bill Gehring before you, and now yourself in the chairman's position, helping and recognizing uh, what we need to do to make Rocky Knoll successful. So I've been very pleased our liaison committees, uh, um, uh, both the current one and the previous session, uh, committees have just been extremely supportive of we're focusing on the big picture and what we need to do to be successful as a group and they've been extremely supportive and from what I understand from feedback from Adam and some of the other department heads um, very um, uh, liberal in allowing me to move things forward at the rate that we need to move them to be successful uh, and not tying things up 
uh, over long uh, debate. That's great to hear. Um, after being here for a year, do you think that Rocky Knoll's getting the support that it needs to be successful? I know like uh, we uh, changed the advertising budget to give you more money to promote the facility and, and things in that area. A absolutely. Um, I've, been, again, been extremely pleased. Anything that I've been able to uh, present, um, not only to Adam, yourself, um, our liaison committee or the, the county board, um, I've been, uh, as long as I'm able to explain why we need it and make it make common sense um, to uh, these individuals, they've uh, supported the process. Um, so I have to say, uh, yeah, yeah we're, we really are getting, the, uh, getting that support. And I know um, even some of the uh, county board supervisors who might have been more critical in the past have um, recognized the improvements that we're making and have extended their hand in, in offering support and, and help. So, no, I, I really believe we're getting what we need. Great. I know you touched on this before, but um, to what extent do you believe the county can really be um, effective in the competing with the private sector in the nursing home area? I think uh, the, the biggest hurdle the county had to make as, as an entity was to understand that they were operating a business, a true, all, no holds barred business. Um, it wasn't just a service that was being provided to the taxpayers, it was a business that they were operating. And while they had structured it appropriately, setting it up in what they refer to in government circles as an enterprise uh, account, um, it had not necessarily been looked at as a business and a lot of times looked at just a service. So um, in going forward um, and realizing that it was a business, we do need to compete. We do need the advertising dollars. You know, we do need to go out and market. We do need to go compete you know, with the private sector. Um, uh, once that realization was made, the support then uh, was there. And um, I think that's the biggest hurdle that needed to be made was just changing that mindset. Now it's a question of us going out and doing our jobs and being successful. And uh, I'm judging from some of the feedback that I'm getting um, from individuals attending association meetings and that, that we're being successful because they're wondering how we're able to do what we're doing when some of our counterparts uh, in the private sector or in the non-for-profit sector are struggling. What do you see as some of our advantages or disadvantages in competing with the private sector? The advantages are, are clear no. um, on the onset, which I had nothing to do with, and it's all back to you guys, is the reputation. The facility has always had a good, strong reputation. While mostly unknown, you know, uh, out there, it was a well-known facility, but the people that did know it had positive experiences with it. So. Um, that was a definite advantage to start out with. Um, going forward, uh, the resource, the support of the county is, is certainly an advantage to us moving forward. Um, and uh, it allows us to take some of the um, more riskier steps in building a business or strengthening our business because we have that foundation that's very strong. Um, and not the whole county is funded by this one payer source or two payer sources like the private sector is. A uh, change in Medicare quickly cripples you know, the private sector, where in our case doesn't necessarily cripple us. While it impacts us, it, uh, we still have the wherewithal to continue to compete and move forward. So, Excellent. Mike, uh, you made a number of changes already. We know that you're, you're looking to make others to make us successful for the future. Mm -hmm. How has your experience been with the labor unions who represent the majority of the employees at Rocky Knoll? Um, remarkably good overall. Um, we're our, our staff out there is represented by two uh, different uh, locals, um, one for uh, the professionals, the RNs, and the other for what it, in the industry is referred to as service employees, which would cover our LPNs, nurse aides, dietary, housekeeping, laundry, maintenance staffs. Um, uh, the service industry staff uh, and the union that represents them, AFSME, 
um, 24, uh, 27, has been extremely supportive. While leery, um, as any management relationship is typically with uh, labor, um, started out very leery. Um, we have developed a rapport and we're communicating well, I believe, um, and they understand the need that we have to make some changes if we're going to keep Rocky Knoll a viable entity and make it successful going forward. And that um, we have to work together to be that way uh, and to be successful. And they've, they've embraced it and I, I want to uh, you know, very much compliment them on that. Our professional group, uh, which is a much smaller unit, um, is having more of a struggle in making that transition and going forward. They understand that they need to, but it's, it's tough. It's, it's a smaller group, uh, less diverse, um, more focused on certain issues. Um, but uh, I too believe there um, we can and continue to develop a decent line of communication and be successful with them because ultimately the goal is the same. Uh, we both, are, are, all three of us want to deliver quality care to the people that are, are, are in our charge and we also want to maintain and, and keep the entity known as Rocky Knoll around and successful. Well, thank you for all your efforts in doing that, Mike. Sure. Turn it over back to Adam. You know, it's probably one of the more pleasurable interviews that we've had regarding our health care centers. You know, when I look back 10 years, our 100th program, uh, during the last 10 years, you know, we looked at downsizing from three to two facilities and closed comprehensive health care center, and that was difficult. That, that had an emotional strain in the community, and though it was badly needed because the, the building was so old and outdated, uh, it was still difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, then we looked at privatizing Sunny Ridge and even more of emotional charge throughout the community, people concerned about the residents and what will that mean for the area. And um, a little over a year and a half ago, the county board made that decision, was perhaps one of the most significant decisions the board's made for our overall financial health as a county. There are 10 nursing homes throughout Sheboygan County, mm -hmm. so counties certainly don't have to be in the business, but we, we got through that, and now we have a, a level of service that I think we can support. Mm -hmm. And Mike, as you know, as you both know, you often say in management, you're only as good as the people around you. Mm -hmm. But uh, you clearly have brought a level of expertise and leadership and energy and can-do attitude that uh, we badly, badly needed in this organization. And I'm just so proud of the work that you're doing at Rocky Knoll. Thanks. One of the things of late that ha is resonating a little bit in the community, I think from a Journal Sentinel article about two months ago was uh, some focus on Sunny Ridge mm -hmm. and nursing homes throughout the state that have had some incidents. Mm -hmm. Whenever you have nursing homes and, and elderly people to care for, accidents happen as they happen as home. And you and I talked about that a little bit, and you gave me a perspective that, you know, this can happen at any nursing home. Yes. Uh, I think our viewers, perhaps by the time they see this program, are going to see an article or focus on this further coming from our own Sheboygan Press. And my understanding is they're going to take a good look at the nursing homes just in Sheboygan County and, and, and touch on what's happening there. Mm -hmm. Please offer our viewers some perspective, Mike, as to you know, what types of incidents can occur or why does it occur? Give, give them a sense of that it isn't, frankly, it's not unusual to have from time to time an accident that happens. And then when that does happen, what the response is from the state? Who's keeping an eye on things? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, yeah, after 35 years in, in this industry and, and working with it, obviously I've seen a lot of change. But um, to operate a healthcare center like we're operating, the, probably the best analogy to give a, um, uh, the public would be you're running an ice skating rink, but the expectation is nobody ever falls down. Uh, whether they get hurt on the ice or just fall on their butt, um, it's, it's clearly unrealistic to assume that you can um, care for so many people that the only reason they're there is because they require a high level of care and intervention that something may not happen. Accidents will happen. The mistake or the problem comes in 
is when the facility doesn't respond correctly to that accident. Um, while you can't anticipate anything, when a problem does occur, you need to investigate it, look at it, and then take the necessary precautions that are, are reasonable to try to prevent that type of thing from happening again. And it is in that circumstance where I would have a problem with a healthcare facility if they've experienced problems and they have the same problems over and over again. That's clearly a lapse in management. The dynamics that you have going on is uh, obviously uh, it makes for headlines. And headlines then generate pressure on politicians. Politicians generate the pressure on the regulatory agencies. And the agencies, quite honestly, look at, uh, the feds will look at a state like Wisconsin and go, we're not seeing the degree of deficiencies or citations that we are seeing in certain other areas. We don't think you're looking hard enough. Step it up. And the pressure comes on. And sometimes things will start to be cited that weren't cited in the past. Um, clearly, when an injury or an incident happens concerning a resident, um, steps need to be taken to safeguard not only that resident from it happening again, but other residents from experiencing that same type of problem. And the difference between a good facility and maybe a, a not so good facility is the fact that a good facility will respond, will take steps, will move forward. But again, that never gives you a guarantee that it cannot or will not happen. Um, all you can do is take reasonable and prudent approaches to preventing and safeguarding these, these issues. You're dealing with a lot of, lot of people. And as you know, um, no two people are alike. And my interpretation of what's acceptable versus somebody else is different. Um, I personally, I think it's good when the, the press raises some attention to this because it, it hopefully makes all nursing homes perhaps even be a little, even more guarded to the important role they play. Mm -hmm. And when people weigh in and raise a concern about one facility or another, again, if that raises awareness and leads to better care, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. But, but as you said, these can happen at any time, at any nursing home. And frankly, I'm real proud of the quality of care that I think our nursing homes throughout Sheboygan County mm -hmm. provide. We have some good nursing homes. I certainly want Rocky Knoll to be number one and our reputation has been strong, but when we went through that privatization of Sunny Ridge, we had significant bumping, and that changes staffing patterns, and people are in new areas, mm -hmm. and I know at Rocky Knoll we had to work through that, and frankly, I think at Sunny Ridge, they still are work working through that a little mm -hmm. bit. They're relying mm -hmm. on more pool help than I know they'd like to. Mm -hmm. But I just raised that because I know there's been a little bit of attention to it. It's very, very important, and, and I think we're fortunate that in Sheboygan County, we have a lot of good people with wonderful hearts and intentions working in all 10 nursing homes throughout Sheboygan County. We only have a minute, I've got to wrap it up. Mike, I just want to say thank you for the leadership sure. you've provided, the work you've done on the budget with your management, te uh, management team, your staff, has been fantastic. It's so good to have you as part of our organization. So thanks for joining us today. Thanks, pleasure to be here. On behalf of Chairman Mike Vandersteen and the County Board, my name is Adam Payne. Again, it was good to have you. And next month, our guest will be Rebecca Persick, the Family Court Commissioner. So until then, be well. <laughs>